Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at how to create a cinematic Hollywood look in our footage. We're going to go from this to ooh, this. It's going to be a nice way to kind of combine a lot of the things we've learned so far. Let's jump in. So before we start color grading, um, actually we've actually been doing color grading up until now. Color grading the term is used for just like getting consistency across multiple shots. So that's grading the footage. But often like on YouTube tutorials is you want the kind of special look for the color grading. So we're going to look at the Hollywood cinematic look in this video. It's very personal. Okay, so there's no way like Hollywood button. <laughs> this is my interpretation of what I feel Hollywood is. And the first thing you should do before you do anything is correct your footage. So at least it's consistently the same and normal. Okay, so we're going to bring in a couple of shots that have already got, they'll be normalized-ish. Okay, so they're in our color folder. They're called color grade one, two, and three. Uh, let's bring them in and create a new sequence. You can see I've got a new um, project going for this one. Let's rename the sequence so we don't get too lost. This could be Hollywood. Uh, let's go call this cinematic. Is that how you spell cinematic? No, oh, that'll do. So these guys uh, have a reasonable look on them already. Okay, so they've come from Pixels. Thank you, Taryn. Uh, so they're consistently across it. So get everything, you know, get your scopes out, get everything looking the same first before you apply your grade or at least your stylized grade. So let's assume we've done that and we don't wanna, you know, you can fix every individual clip like we've been doing up until now, but in terms of adding a, you know, a color grade style, we're gonna do it to an adjustment layer. So we're gonna make a new uh, adjustment layer. There we go. Uh, that'll it's gonna match my sequence, which is perfect. And I'm gonna drag it on and stretch it out so it covers everything. Let's tidy this up. Who remembers how to select just the audio? That's right, oh, I have nothing selected. Hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Delete him. That's just a nothing bit of audio attached to that file. And let's look at the contrast as well. So we're gonna, well, sorry, the comparison view. It's this one here, that little icon. If you can't see it, go to plus and drag it is it on by normal? I think it might be on by default. I can't remember actually. So drag it down if you can't see it here, just drag it into this menu. And we're gonna see our before and after. And we're gonna use this button here, shot or frame. Okay, so what we wanna do is be matching, you know, so it's before and after. You can turn that off so that you've got a, like a reference and then be working over here and be trying to get the same color grade. But what I want is to have that on so they're kind of both the same. We'll color grade this first part, maybe where the balloons are at. You know, here I'm at 12.02. You can do it anywhere you like. Now this is very personal, but for me, the Hollywood film look, it, basically clearing out the mids and having just accentuated uh, highlights and shadows is where what I like. So the easiest way to do this is make sure your adjustment layer is selected. Okay, and let's go to basic correction and our contrast. Now uh, let's have a look, let's open up one of our scopes. Okay, so let's go to Lumetri scopes. And in here, I want to see the Luma waveform. There is there. Okay, and you can see the before and after are there as well. So you're gonna end up, let's just do something big. Can you see it's showing you this shot before I made the adjustments and after so you can compare them. Okay, and what I feel like gives us the most, you know, what we want in terms of that Hollywood feel is that contrast. Can you see I'm just clearing out the middles as in all the midtones are getting squished up or down, not leaving much left behind. And I feel like that gives me a lot of what I want from this look. Can you see the before and after? I don't know, what do you think? All right, I'm back. My machine crashed. <laughs> um, it gives me a really good excuse to show you, A, that it happens to all of us, uh, and B, uh, the comparison view is a bit weird. That's why I haven't done it much in this class, because it's, um, I don't know everybody's level in this, you know, that's watching this video. So the comparison view can be a little strange, but this gives me an example to like go and show you. So if I turn my comparison view on now, and we match it so we're kind of matching a frame shot comparison okay and you're like oh where's my before because that's showing me the after and before now okay you want to go before before okay so what we want to do is with our adjustment layer off this is how to kind of like reset it this is what i do when i'm personally working turn it off okay turn that on and off so it shows me like the you know the normal version or the one with uh, Illumetry off. Now turn this back on. There's a lot of that. All right, so where were we? So contrast is up. Let's look at uh, tinting the lights and the darknesses. So we can do that. The best, the easiest way is under the color wheels. Okay, we've got our midtone shadows and highlights, and I want to add some coloring, okay, uh, to the highlights and shadows. 
Uh, up until now, we've been trying to make the highlights perfectly white. Okay, but now we're actually gonna add a tint and you can decide which way this goes. We're gonna go for that kind of orange teal fashion look. Okay, so we're going to go the highlights. I'm gonna drag them down to this teal here. I'm gonna go exaggerated so you can see what I mean. And this up to the oranges. Mm -hmm. And you can decide that's kind of more like Stranger Things, old worldy one. Let's go the other way around. Okay, let's go the shadows more tealy. And let's go the highlights kind of up in this warmer space here. You may or may not like this. We're gonna leave uh, face detection. We don't need it on now because we don't have any faces. Okay, so we're gonna leave it off. So where are we at? Even with the comparison view, I find turning it on and off is a little bit easier. Actually, let me show you with a different, we're gonna use color correction A. Remember this one from earlier? Okay, I'm throwing it on the same timeline and I will show you that orange and teal. So um, shadows are gonna go right down into this kind of teal further that way somewhere in there and let's turn off comparison view for the moment so we can get it nice and big so you can see and the highlights are going to drag into the orange here and let's also do some uh, basic correction okay sick now the difference of doing all these corrections now uh, I should be doing on adjustment layer to this is I'm trying to actually get a look rather than get it correct, you know, or consistent. So I guess that's different when you're doing a color grade on purpose. Okay. So let's look at our color grade now on this one. Can you see it's, it's a lot different in here with that orange and teal. Yeah. Cinematic ish. I'm thinking transformers and Blade Runner and those types of things. All right. Let's spin him. Goodbye. So what else let is let's look at different one. Okay, and let's look at adding some grain. So we're gonna go to our effects library, which is not down here at the moment. For some reason mine's up here. <laughs> it's normally down here. Okay, I'm gonna go to noise and we're gonna apply it to our adjustment layer so that it applies to everything underneath. Uh, and now we're going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, click in here, my new little shortcut. Now this brings up another reason why uh, you should be shooting, or at least working with a uh, codec that's not H.264 because you can see it's already really noisy. Okay, so we're going to add noise on top of it. Okay, just because. Uh, we're going to drag it up a little bit. And we'll say a little bit, that's 100%. I'm going to go to something like 10%, something like that. So it's there. Okay, and you can decide whether you want to use uh, an, a colored noise, okay, or a black and white noise. That looks a bit strong, but if I go back to zero there, oh, sorry, go back to full screen, fit. That's not working. Okay, we've got a bit of, just a hint of that grain in there now, and it's across all of the clips underneath. Now we're faking a lot of this, like a lot of this color comes from the lenses being used, the lighting being used. Okay, we're kind of adding it in post to get that look. Also like a little bit of vignette, probably a little bit too much. Okay, but vignette I'm gonna just, Way too much, somewhere in there. On, off. So we're gonna add some black bars. We're gonna open up the graphic. Uh, we're gonna do more about essential graphics later on, but I'm gonna show you this quick trick for adding the bars top and bottom. Now these bars top and bottom should be, you know, it's the aspect ratio of the actual way it's being shot, okay, on what kind of camera, the sensor it uses. We're gonna fake it by going to essential graphics, edit. We're gonna add a rectangle. We will make it black. We will make it this wide. By this wide, by randomly this. There is an aspect ratio that you can calculate properly. This is a total hack. Okay, so I've got one. This is gonna be bar one, bar top even. Doop. And we can duplicate it by right clicking, duplicate. And this other one is gonna be bar bottom. And this bottom one is going to come down the bottom. And we're going to do it for the entire clip. All right, so we've added some grain. We've added some bars, maybe a bit thick. Because I'm going to need for this one here to maybe move the position under motion. Position up a little bit. My computer's running really slowly at the moment. It's the, it's the noise, it's the grain. 
here we go. Now this one is already in slow motion. We're gonna do slow motion pr properly a little bit later in the course. So that's kind of nice. Now let's see if we can play this back. There is no chance. Oh, it's playing okay. <laughs> I take it back, it plays fine. I bet you yours, oh, oh, there we go. So let's use this as a moment to decide how do I get it to play back nicely so I can check my effects. Okay, so one, the easiest one is to say, can I live with quarter quality? And you can, I can't, I can't work out the grain on this one. Okay, so that might be enough for you. Okay, because you might be working on timing and just kind of general color, but that's a bit low. The other reason is running so badly is this uh, red bar. How do I get rid of the red bar? That's the quiz question. I'll give you, I'll give you a second. All right, so it is the enter key on your keyboard. Okay, or you can go to sequence and go to render effects in and out. And this is probably the easiest one. It's gonna run really quick. Okay. While it's rendering, I'll talk, the other way of doing it is using proxies. Um, we're using very small file sizes with terrible compression or a lot of compression so that there's a lot of kind of like artifacts in the video. But the other problem is, is that Premiere Pro and most editing programs don't like that MP4 slash H.264 codec, okay? Because it's so jam packed that it's very hard to operate. So you might be using originals that are in a different you know, codec like our ProRes or our GoPro Cineform, or even if you do start life with H.264 MP4s, you might create proxies in a different codec to make things run faster. And um, again, I'm a bit bored, <laughs> I'm gonna cancel, but we know, look, it's actually done a chunk of it already. Ah, oh, playing back nicely. Way too much grain, it's okay. We can go and change it and have to re-render it, but that's all right. I've added probably too exaggerated the orange and teal. I've pushed the contrast up and down so that the midtones get kind of left out a little bit. We added a vignette, we added way too bigger bars. And the last thing we're gonna do is down here where it says adjustment layer. Did you know you can rename it? Gonna rename it down here. We're gonna go to rename. We're gonna call this one Hollywood. And the next one we'll do something similar, but we'll do kind of more of an independent indie film kind of look to it. One other little last nugget of information is if you are on a Mac, uh, or actually a Mac or PC, and you are finding, we talked about, you know, making it go faster. Some of the other things that aren't as obvious is programs running in the background. So Dropbox, if it's syncing, man, it hates life. <laughs> it takes up a lot of system resources. And the other one is Chrome. So Google Chrome, if you use that for your browser and you are trying to edit, you will find it chews up a lot of your memory. So turn it off if you can work that way. I use Chrome normally, but when I'm editing, I have to switch to Safari, which is fine. I'm just, I don't like Safari as much as I like Chrome. So I only use Safari when I'm editing because it's so much lighter weight, okay? And Chrome is so, it's a beast. It sucks up all the system resources. And so does Premiere Pro and they can, it's a bit slow. Anyway, let's get on to the next video. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do wanna go further with Premiere Pro, you might wanna join me for my larger courses, okay, called Premiere Pro Essentials and Premiere Pro Advanced. There'll be links for both of those in the description. Hope to see you in the course. Bye.